Good morning everyone. Today, my group and I will be presenting our proposal towards achieving laboratory accreditation, ISO 15189. Throughout this proposal, we'll be going through the meaning, benefits, methods, and roadmaps towards achieving accreditation. Towards the end of the video, we'll be going into detail on our expected outcome or implication return on investment. So, what is the meaning of ISO 15189? First, let's start with the meaning of ISO accreditation. ISO accreditation is the formal recognition by an independent body that a certification body operates according to international standards. ISO 15189 is a standard developed by the International Organization for Standardization Technical Committee, ISO for short. It specifies the requirements for quality and competence in medical laboratories. It is also an assurance that the laboratory has been assessed against internationally recognized standards. ISO 15189 indicates that the lab meets a certain standard of quality management and aims to prove the existence of a quality system, technical competence, and capable personnel. For well, the benefit on obtaining accreditation, the, the three points uh, in the screen can be summed up into one sentence, which is the testing competency will be recognized. With that recognition, it becomes a gauge to the customer to judge the competency. And because of that accreditation, you create a quality management system which can monitor the performance of the lab. With the monitoring system set in place, the staff will have to increase their performance in order to achieve the requirements set in place by the accreditation body. And with that being said, with the accreditation achieved, the lab would gain international recognition of competency. And with that, increasing the client's confidence in using the lab and increasing the productivity in terms of the client doesn't need to hire another body to verify the test results. And because of the increased performance, there will be less waste created as a side effect. And hey, you get discount on liability insurance as well. When it comes to obtaining the accreditation, the first step is to contact the accreditation body, obtain the application documents from the body, and learn about the accreditation process. Before submitting the application, the management of the company acquiring the certification should implement training on the staff and practicing the system. Once the management and employees are clear on the processes of accreditation, the application can be sent in, along with necessary documentation. An internal audit can be conducted by the management of the company by hiring ISO 15189 trained internal auditors. Using the results from this, the management can make the necessary changes in the company in order to improve organization performance towards its objectives. This can be done before the application is sent in. The next steps are taken by the accreditation body. There are three stages of auditing done, which are adequacy audit, pre-assessment and compliance assessment. The adequacy audit is a document review to make sure the SAWM requirements are met. The pre-assessment is optional where the applicant can request it in order to make sure the company is ready for the compliance assessment. This assessment checks for non-conformities and implements corrective actions before the final audit. The final audit is the compliance assessment, where the accreditation body assesses whether the applicant can competently perform its tasks for which it seeks accreditation. This assessment is done on the quality system of the applicant against Standards Malaysia accreditation criteria. After sending the assessment report, the assessment report will be deliberated by the Laboratory Accreditation Evaluation Panel, who will then make a recommendation to the Director General. The Director General of Standard Malaysia is responsible in making the final decision on the approval of accreditation. After the approval of accreditation, the accreditation is then awarded to the laboratory applicant for a period of three years. In that three years, accredited certification bodies will perform internal audits at least once every 12 months. However, the frequency of internal audits could be reduced, provided that the laboratory can continue to show competence in carrying out assessment tasks. Standard Malaysia will also schedule surveillance assessment. For the first cycle of surveillance, the first sur surveillance assessment will be scheduled nine months from the date of granting the certificate. Second surveillance assessment will be scheduled 12 months from the date of first surveillance. Lastly, a reassessment by Standards of Malaysia will be scheduled 3 months before the date of expiry of the accreditation. And now, I'll explain to you our ISO 15189 roadmap. This roadmap will show you that how much time do we need to take to achieve accreditation, all the way from the preparation stage until we achieve accreditation. And this is our timeline, we'll be starting in May 2020. So first, after we obtain the decision to pursue ISO 15189, we'll be spending 1 month for the trainings and 3 months to compile all the internal audits and perform gap analysis. After that, in three months, which is in August, we'll be sending our application form with auditor documents to SAMM and perform pre-assessment by the SAMM inspectors. In three months, which is in November, the ISO compliance assessment will be again done by SAMM inspectors and we'll have our assessment report reviewed by the LAEP. After that, in February 2021, we finally have our accreditation approved. Next, we can proceed on with our normal procedures until November, which Standards Malaysia will send inspectors to have our first surveillance. In conclusion, we will need around nine months to achieve accreditation. For the budget, we'll be requesting fundings in three different categories. First for training, next for application, and lastly for inspection. Under training, we'll be needing around 4,800 ringgit for the training, 
And for application, we'll be needing 2,000 ringgit to send application form to SAMM. And for the inspection, we'll be needing 15,000 ringgit for all three inspections by the SAMM inspectors. All in all, you'll be adding up to a total of 31,800 ringgit. We hope that you provide us with the funding so that we can proceed on with the accreditation process. So what can we expect from return on investment? We expect that there will be a reduction in cost, ease in management and process control, and an increase in quality service delivery and client satisfaction. So in the short term, which is a few months to two years, we have found evidence that hospitals without accreditation would need to spend more. However, after accreditation, the cost is reduced by 30%, which is 30% in profit. In the long term, a study showed that on average, the cost for quality management has been reduced by 4.8%. So according to our data-driven statistics, we expect that there will be a 35 decrease in cost after accreditation. In terms of management and process control, in the short term, because of having a defined system, there will be a reduction in sample rejection. This saves costs and also we will receive lesser complaints from clients. In the long term, rather than dealing with the problem when it arrives, there will be an effective system to prevent the problems from happening at the first place. So we expect that the lab will be able to see problems right before they occur, which is very efficient and helpful for the lab. In short term, for delivery service and client satisfaction, there is evidence that shows accreditation would increase clients' confidence. In a recent survey, 66.6% .6 of patients in 73 accredited hospitals would recommend the host hospital that they are in. In long term, we will be able to provide training to employees and implement quality indicators to find the weak points in them so that we can improve the quality and provide the best service possible. In the end, we expect to see at least 50% improvement for the first three years. We thank you very much for listening and do hope you carefully consider our proposal. Thank you and have a nice day.